In today's show, hear from the Oklahoma City Thunder about what happened during the playoffs and Governor George Nye is honored. Also, volunteers give a neighborhood a facelift and Allied Arts celebrates a record-breaking campaign. We have a lot to get to, but first, the Oklahoma City Thunder only got to the second round of the playoffs this year. With the Oklahoma City Thunder out of the playoffs, there are a lot of questions about exactly what happened. The Oklahoma's Darnell Mayberry and Jenny Carlson explain why the Thunder's season ended in the second round of the playoffs with another heartbreaking loss to the Grizzlies. Darnell, let's start out with the end. The Thunder, a furious rally to end this game, nearly have a chance to send it to overtime with Kevin Durant having a shot. What happened there at the end? Kevin Durant missed, sort of like he had been doing all game long. Uh, he missed 16 shots, 21 points on 21 shots and it just wasn't his night. I think, you know, this really showed you how much he needs Russell Westbrook and others to really step up and help him. He didn't have that tonight and, and the Thunder couldn't get out of here and extend this series to take it back to Memphis. How did the Thunder find themselves in a hole? Because they really had to claw back from what seemed like an impossible hole to dig out of. Why were they not able to keep it a little bit closer and then have to make that rally at the end? I thought the second quarter really hurt this team tonight. Uh, the, the offense really bogged down. Uh, it was too much relying on Kevin Durant. No movement on the opposite side of the court. They were all just sort of focusing in on Durant and watching him go one-on-one -on -one. and the Grizzlies, it just really played into the Grizzlies' hands. And that just really killed the momentum that the Thunder had going into the second quarter. An 11-1 run to start the period, and then 32-15, the Grizzlies outscore the Thunder in that second quarter. So uh, the second quarter, it just really got away from the Thunder. The Thunder, though, do make a rally, do get this game to a situation where fans are back on their feet. It's going crazy at the peak. Durant misses that shot, though, and Darnell, Nafee, fine jewelry moment of brilliance is? Tony Allen, of all people. I mean, the guy was big in this series from the moment game two started. He, he guarded Kevin Durant. But tonight, when Zach Randolph couldn't make free throws, Tony Allen stepped up and made two when Zach Randolph had just missed two. Pushed the lead to four uh, with 3.3 seconds left. That was your moment of brilliance. All right, so the Thunder loses by four. The series is over in five games. Darnell, what now for this team? Uh, obviously, they head into the offseason earlier than they had hoped, but with Russell Westbrook hurt, I think a lot of people felt like this might be it. This could be the series that does them in. What now for this team? Well, I think you're writing about this for Thursday's editions of the Oklahoman. There's no need to panic. There's no need to, you know, have mass changes, anything like that. Russell Westbrook needs to just get healthy. And if that happens, the Thunder's back next year, a championship cont contender again, uh, and all is well. I think this is a roster that continues to compete for championships, uh, and there's no reason to really panic or do anything major. You don't need to have shakeups. Just get Russell Westbrook healthy and come back next year ready to play. And let's remember, after that injury, they do win a series and they push a team to five games that, you know, Darnell could go to the NBA Finals. Yeah, I mean, I think this was a great season for the Thunder. 60-win season, the most in the Oklahoma City era. Northwest Division champs again, uh, the best record in the Western Conference. And they did all that five days after trading James Harden. And then, as you mentioned, they make it to the second round after losing Russell Westbrook to the knee injury. They could have easily dropped their heads and, and sort of bowed out in the first round, but they hung in there, showed their resiliency. Great season by the Thunder. All right, be sure to stay with the best coverage team anywhere at NewsOK.com and every day in the Oklahoman. Well, this will come as no surprise to anybody, but our sports team has a lot of opinions about the last game and the whole season for that matter. Read more on NewsOK.com slash sports slash thunder. Yep, but what a lot of people want are explanations from the Thunder staff. And here are some comments from the Thunder head coach about the season and what the future might hold for his team. And Kevin Durant, the all-star, reflects on the Memphis series and how he will be better next year. We had a really good year. You know, we had a, a, a lot of good things that, that we did this past season. A couple of things that we really wanted to improve on offense and a couple of things that we wanted to improve on defense, we were able to do that in the regular season. And, and I thought that our guys um, played with a lot of uh, toughness throughout the, years, throughout the year. And, and going into the playoffs, we felt very confident that we will continue to, to play that way. And then with uh, Russell's injury, I really liked the way our guys stepped up. You know, they still had the confidence and, and belief in themselves that we can still win games. You know, waking up this morning, there's no question that I'm disappointed that I'm not able to uh, prepare another practice plan and, and prepare another uh, scout 
for the next game, and our guys are the same way. We have 15 guys in there that feel the same way. And even Russell, you know, Russell feels that we were good enough to, to beat Memphis. Um, we played them tough. You know, we, we gave everything we had. We were, just, we were in every ball game, five games, came down to the last minutes of the game. And I, I thought that, that said a lot about our character, and our, our commitment to continue to, to play together and, and move forward as a team. But I'm, uh, like I said, I'm real proud of the way our guys performed throughout the year. Yeah, it was frustrating. I mean, we couldn't make shots. I mean, I think we, we, if we just started making shots, that would loosen up their defense a little bit. But, you know, if we missing shots, they're going to stick with what they've been doing. And, you know, we just couldn't get over that hump offensively the whole series. So it was tough for us. And, you know, it's frustrating, of course, to lose. But, you know, the sun shined this morning. So, um, you know, we can't hang our heads for too long. But nothing is ever a wasted year for me as a basketball I've grown so much as a, a man, you know, since the season. Since the beginning of the season, I've grown so much as a leader. Nothing's ever wasted. You know, of course, the ultimate goal in this league is to win a championship. Um, but I'm never going to say I wasted a year. I'm blessed to even wake up and, and do something I love every day. So it's never wasted. And we take that for granted a lot, but that's something I'm not going to do. Uh, I enjoy playing this game. I enjoy playing for the city. My teammates, so every day I get to see those guys and go through some tough times and laugh and argue is never wasted. So I'm um, just, like I said, blessed to be here and you know, never going to take it for granted. I'm always going to fight for, you know, this game I love. I'm going I'm to claw until, you know, it happens until, it's the, you know, the last buzzer sounds. And that's if after a championship, then, um, of course, I'll be happy. I'm not satisfied just, you know, being in this league and losing. You know, I'm going to work as hard as I can to uh, try to get to that mountaintop. We have a bright future. We have a good team that's going to get better, and we have some great players that are going to continue to improve. Kevin, like I said, Kevin and Russell are not, they're not going to, they're not, they haven't leveled off, and they're not going down. They're only going to get a little bit better every year for the next five years. Uh, and then our young guys, and we, they haven't played a lot, but they've worked their, they worked their um, tails off all season long. And we expect to have another great um, summer of development, and those guys are a big part of our future. And Sam has done a great job of putting the roster together, and he's going to continue to do that. We still had a chance to win in the playoffs, and we still competed, and we still showed a lot of character and resiliency to – figure out ways to get the job done. We just came up short. Unfortunately, we came up short. They were a little bit better than us in all four games. Well, Sam and I, we talk. Um, we talk constantly. We, we are always in communication every day. We will uh, communicate with one another. And Sam has blessed me with 15 competitive, um, driven athletes. And he's always done that. And he's always made great decisions on the roster. And that's, I don't see that changing. And, uh, but he, he gives me 15 guys that I love to coach. And come November, opening night or late October, I'm going to have that same opportunity that guys that I, that, I, that I love coaching that are competitive, that are high character guys that are committed to winning. Is this a lost opportunity with, with the Russell injury and going out in the round you did? No, it's, I don't look at it, anything as a lost opportunity. We had, you know, it's a blessing to play in this league, and we <clears throat> we grew up, you know, we of course we didn't win, but, you know, we learned so many lessons about ourselves, and, you know, once you look at it like that, then you can you can grow from it. Everything is a, is a process, you know. You don't just, you know, just you got to go through some tough times to, you know, to get where you want to get to. Everybody's been through them, all the best teams, all the – Great players, you know, they've been through tough times, so I wouldn't say it's a, it's a lost opportunity. You know, we learned a lot. And, um, you know, once you start to learn, you start to get better um, each and every year, and I think that's what happened with us. And now you can hear from more of the Thunder players and staff. We have interviews with Kendrick Perkins, Derek Fisher, Kevin Martin, and Reggie Jackson. Also, hear from General Manager Sam Presti. Go to newsok.com to find those videos and stories. We live all the moments and then hear the final thoughts. Yes. Coming from them. Mm -hmm. All right, several Oklahomans have been selected to be in the 2013 Oklahoma Hall of Fame. You'll hear from one of the honorees next. And volunteers collect paint to help restore a neighborhood. That's coming up.
everyone gets excited on game day. With the Oklahoman Full Access, you can get your sports news any way you like. The Oklahoman Full Access includes print, smartphones, tablets, print replica, and our digital archives, starting as low as $12 a month. And it's free to current print subscribers. Log on to newsok.com slash subscribe to get started today. The Oklahoman Full Access. Hello, this is Mary. I can help you. Hi, my grandma wants to know how to record my show. Press the guide button on the remote. Abuelita, toca el botón guide. And now find your show on the screen and press record. Ahora busca el programa en la... la... pantalla. Working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. Everyone has their morning routine. With the Oklahoman Full Access, you can get your morning news any way you like. The Oklahoman Full Access includes print, smartphones, tablets, print replica, and our digital archives, starting as low as $12 a month. And it's free to current print subscribers. Log on to theoklahoman.com slash subscribe to get started today. The Oklahoman Full Access. The Oklahoma Heritage Association and Gaylord Pickens Museum hosted an annual luncheon where past Oklahoma Hall of Fame inductees will be the first to hear the official announcement of the 2013 class. That's right. Vicki Miles LaGrange is one of the seven Oklahomans who have been selected for induction into the 86th class of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. I am here at the Gaylord Pickens Museum where seven outstanding Oklahomans have been selected to be inducted into the 86th Oklahoma Hall of Fame. They are joining 655 individuals who've been inducted since 19 28 and I'm here with Shannon who is the president of the Oklahoma Heritage Association. She can tell us all about this. This is fantastic. Seven Oklahomans are joining a lot of very prestigious names. It's an exciting day for us. This is one of those days where several months of work has come to culmination and so we're going to announce a great class for 2013. Yes. So who are the seven? Well, uh, in, in no order other than just my memory, uh, John Grondike uh, from Enid, Timothy Headington who lives in uh, Dallas now, but is from Oklahoma City. Judge Vicki Miles LaGrange, uh, also from Oklahoma City. Uh, Russell Perry from Oklahoma City. Mike Case from Tulsa. Um, Reggie Witten, who's from Seminole, Oklahoma, uh, now in Oklahoma City. And then uh, Gary England. Everybody knows Gary England from Sealing and now Oklahoma City. Yes, I know. So obviously a range of people, a range of different occupations that represents all different aspects of Oklahoma. That's really the charge of the uh, Hall of Fame Selection Committee is to find geographic diversity, uh, field of work diversity, obviously um, ethnic diversity. We, we try to really be thoughtful and deliberate about that. So the process is um, amazing and we have a great class because of that process, but they are, it's a very, it's a very unique class. When I got the call, I bursted out crying um, because I wish my dad were here to know. Uh, he always said I was the boy he never had. <laughs> He'd say that a boy. <laughs> but my 92-year-old mom is going to be here today, and she doesn't know yet. I feel so privileged to have served in every branch of our government, and it makes people good citizens. Um, and that's what we—that's what I do in my spare time is spend time. I spend a lot of volunteer time doing a lot of things with young people because we want them to be good, accountable citizens because that's how we make a better Oklahoma, that's how we make a better world. You were um, nominated by President Bill Clinton to be the Chief United States District Judge. You were recommended by Senator David Boren. You were confirmed by the United States Senate as U.S. Attorney and U.S. District Judge. That's not too shabby. No, I never contemplated either of those and I, I'm so um, really grateful for the confidence that David Boren had in me as a professional. Um, I was. I worked for Carl Albert the whole time I was in law school until he left. I was a federal prosecutor for the Department of Justice and that was in the early 80s. I was uh, prosecuting Nazi war criminals. You volunteer your talents and diplomacy in international judicial systems including Rwanda, China, Brazil and Sudan? Yes, and I was appointed to serve for six years by then Chief Justice William Rehnquist and I have worked all over the globe. I was in the Sudan on behalf of um, the State Department just before they voted to create basically two Sudans, North and South. So there are requests that come into our government all the time, um, and that's what this committee does. 
I've done so much time on the ground in Rwanda. I feel like it's home. So obviously you've uh, served on the national stage, but Oklahoma is still home. Oklahoma is still home and uh, went to the public schools of Oklahoma. Um, until the ninth grade and then I graduated from Bishop McGinnis High School. This must be such an honor for you. It is. It is. It is just, it's the greatest. I'm very unworthy of it. It's so many people so deserving. Those unsung people who never, who, ne who we never know about and that's what makes Oklahoma so incredible. And then they'll be actually formally inducted to the 86th Oklahoma Hall of Fame Banquet and Induction Ceremony in November, is that right? November 7th here in Oklahoma City. Mark your calendars now. It'll be at the Renaissance uh, Convention Center, Cox Convention Center in Oklahoma City. And it'll be the biggest night of their life. We're really excited about it. And then tell us about today. So today is a luncheon where the former inductees can come together along with the new ones. Yes, we the Hall of Fame induction is just kind of a crazy time. We really scheduled in the day before until that night. So there isn't, there's a lot of family and friends in town, but they, it's a world. In. So we started this event a few years ago and what happens is past honorees get to share this moment with them and kind of relive their moment and then also kind of welcome them and bring them along the way. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. So for more information, if people are curious about the induction ceremony and, and just about the uh, Heritage Association in general, what's your website? www.oklahomaheritage.com. Thank you so much. You. The names of the Hall of Fame members as well as busts and portraits of these individuals can be seen at the Gaylord Pickens Oklahoma Heritage Museum. In addition, the inductees are recognized on granite monuments in the Heritage Plaza at the Oklahoma State Fairgrounds. Former Oklahoma Governor George Nye was recognized for his hard work and achievements during a symposium on the governorship and legacy of George Nye. It was held at the Oklahoma Historical Society. Throughout the symposium, Governor Nye's colleagues and family members spoke about how he handled situations. Most of the people here have heard the story so many times uh, because I, I love to tell it just to dig in one more time. But um, I was working back in the days when all the airlines had downtown ticket offices. I don't know if some of you will remember this, but I was working in the Skirvin Hotel uh, for TWA Airlines, and George always tells everybody he met me in the hotel, but I really was working for an airline in the hotel. It was a short romance. We met, and six months later, we were married. Now, I had been single. I it was divorced. I had been single for 10 years, and I thought, what in the world am I doing getting married? You know, I had a I had a good job, I was happy, my son and I were doing fine. And I just I, I kinda got swept away, I think, because everybody kept telling me how lucky I was. And I thought, well, okay, maybe I better do this. And um, but then later when we married and I kept trying to figure out where this lucky stuff came in because he had just finished a campaign and was $100,000 in debt. Now let me tell you, 50 years ago that was just like $5 million in debt. He was $100,000 in debt. He did not have a job. He did not have a house. He did not have a car. Okay, I had a house. I had a car, I had a job, and I wasn't in debt. And I never could figure out why I was the lucky one, you know? <laughs> but as it turned out, I really was the lucky one. Now, speakers also recognized Governor Nye as a force of unity during tumultuous times, which, as a result, when he was reelected in 1982, he became the first gubernatorial candidate to carry all 77 counties. Wow, good for him. All right, well, coming up, volunteer organizations join together to collect paint for a good cause. That's next. With the Oklahoman Full Access, we deliver your news any way you'd like. The Oklahoman Full Access includes print, smartphones, tablets, print replica, digital archives, and the new Oklahoman.com. Plans start at only $12 a month. And all this is free to current print subscribers. Log on to Oklahoman.com slash subscribe to get started today. The Oklahoman, full access. I look up to you for all the things you do. I hope to, I hope to be like you. Someday soon Cause I love 
working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. We're shooting more photos at each assignment, but we're putting those into separate galleries that can be added into the iPad and online editions so that the, the viewers can see a lot more photographs. We can tell a lot more of the story visually, give them more detailed shots, more overall shots, just a lot more variety that really enriches their experience. Volunteer organizations in Oklahoma City plan to use donated paint, new, old, and every color, to revitalize a neighborhood. Neighborhood Alliance and Building Together OKC are collecting the paint to give an Oklahoma City neighborhood a facelift with help from Catholic Heart Work Camp. The I Heart My Neighborhood project is a collaboration between Neighborhood Alliance and Rebuilding Together. Uh, we are working to uh, beautify and improve an inner city neighborhood, a neighborhood that was chosen by the City of Oklahoma City Planning Department to be a part of their Strong Neighborhoods Initiative. So we'll be working to improve uh, and beautify senior citizen homes and also low to moderate income neighborhood resident homes. The neighborhood we're gonna be working with is called Culbertson's East Highland. Its boundaries are Northeast 8th Street, Northeast 16th Street, Lottie Avenue, and Martin Luther King Avenue. So far we've create, uh, collected about, I would say 50 gallons of paint. Uh, we are still needing about 40 more gallons of paint and we are getting a 55 gallon drum from, uh, from a, a partner. The I Heart My Neighborhood project will take place June 24th through 27th. Over 300 uh, teenagers throughout the United States will come and volunteer in, uh, in this uh, neighborhood. In 2006, we formed our neighborhood association and we were contacted by George Uresco with Neighborhood Alliance and told us about a, a youth group that was coming to River Park or coming to Oklahoma City uh, called Catholic Heart Work Camp. We started contacting the local businesses here in Oklahoma City and uh, reaching out and local businesses and nonprofits asking for help. Would they like to help donate to the projects that we were going to do? And that was the beginning of, I like to call it a love story, because it absolutely changed the lives of so many people in our neighborhood. And the project will take place June 24th through the 27th, and donations can be dropped off at Neighborhood Alliance. Now, for more information on how you can get involved and donate, you can call 528-6322. All right, when veterans return from service to come back home, the reality of day-to-day -day living can be overwhelming, especially if it's your home that needs a remodel. But for one local veteran, he recently got a surprise. For more than a week, volunteers with the Military Order of the Purple Hearts Oklahoma City Chapter, along with Home Depot volunteers, remodeled retired Army Sergeant Josh Lozer's home. I had looked into getting it done myself, but ain't too many companies willing to take payments on those kind of things. I just talked to Russ, and Russ talked to Ginger, and Ginger talked to all these people, and now I got stuff in my house. It's kind of cool. Through a $7,800 grant from the Home Depot Foundation, we are giving Josh Lozier's home a makeover. The Purple Heart recipient and Iraq War veteran was injured three times by improvised explosive devices while serving overseas. He lost the majority of his eyesight and has titanium pins in his back as a result of the attacks. Lozier says he doesn't like asking for help and he is surprised by the help he has received. There's people who are a lot worse than, off than me from the same situations as me, and they, they deserve this kind of stuff a lot more than me. And I didn't do anything special. I just got lucky and survived. This is what community is all about. The current Oklahoma City chapter commander for the order says on a local level, this is the biggest project they've ever undertaken since he's been a member there. The grant for the Lozier's home ended up being $7,800. Wow, very nice. That's awesome. All right, well, Allied Arts beats their record for fundraising for the second year in a row. That's next. Social media gives readers a voice that they can interact with us um, in a way that I don't think they've ever been able to. And it allows us to, you know, include their thoughts and their questions and everything in our content. Whereas we used to just publish and just tell everybody what the news and entertainment and information was. The rest of the world wants to engage. They want to talk back. They want us to talk back to them. They want insight, they want opinion, and a lot of that is new culturally for a newspaper. I look up to you for all the things you do. I hope to, I hope to be like you. Some 
working hard for every smile. Another reason why Cox is your friend in the digital age. In 2012, we had the largest concentration of Oklahoma musicians to go to South by Southwest ever. Dave Morris and I, we talked about it, it's like, let's just do this guerrilla style, okay? We'll shoot one or two performances by an act and then, we'll get, and then we'll get an interview and we'll get it up as quickly as possible. So that's what we were doing. We ended up with 21 different videos and those also included some stand-up. Well, for the second year in a row, Allied Arts is celebrating a record-breaking fundraising campaign. Over $3.3 million have been raised so far in the 2013 Allied Arts campaign. Here are excerpts from the recent celebration event. 2013 campaign celebration. Uh, I want to emphasize this is a celebration. This is not the completion of our campaign. This is an opportunity to celebrate where we are now, knowing that we still need to raise some more money. But we've got a lot of exciting news for you tonight. I work all the time trying to recruit new companies or trying to get them to expand in the state of Oklahoma. And many times, corporate CEOs want to know what is there to do in Oklahoma. If I move my company there or how is the quality of life in our state for my employees? They want to have things to do. They want to have culture and music and certainly art and all the other things that go with that. And so you're also helping me when it comes to recruiting jobs because you're supporting the arts and, and making all this possible. It's, it's very important. And I think it's one of the reasons why Oklahoma's doing so well right now. For many, many years, over 41 years, this organization's worked hard to do great things and raise a lot of money and put on lots of programs and support the arts. And we certainly are enjoying the blessings of that. We've got about six weeks left, so that three million three hundred is getting bigger. And we don't know where it's going to end, but we're going to keep pushing until the end of June. Congrats to Judy Hatfield and John Rochelle. They were co-chairs of this year's uh, campaign. Uh, $3.3 million is nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> oh, wow. That'll go towards some worthy efforts, and I believe they're actually going to extend from 20 member campaigns to uh, agencies to include some more this year. So that's nice. kind of exciting and new. I know, and it's great because obviously, like you're saying, it includes a lot of different arts organizations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. All right, that's all the time we have for this edition of News OK TV. And you can watch all of these videos and much more online at newsok.com. See ya.